For the next month, I lived a double life. At night, I would pack boxes until the wee hours of the morning. And during the day, when Trisha was at work, I would stream to over 100,000 people. All of them were ecstatic I was back streaming again, and on a newer console. My subscriber count exploded. Being adored by millions of people around the world and hated by everyone closest to you is quite the experience, I gotta say. The days ticked down until Trisha's dad arrived and I was stressed beyond belief. I already knew I was behind the eight ball when it came to winning over my future father-in-law, Patrick. He was the head of a Fortune 500 company, and I had overheard Trisha lying to him about what I did for a living on more than one occasion. Trisha and I came from two different backgrounds. I didn't expect her to understand everything about my past, but she knew how much video games meant to me. I thought that would be enough, but I soon found out that wasn't the case. As we cleaned the apartment for her father's arrival the next day, Trisha came across my PS5 hidden deep in the back of our closet. I know this isn't what I think it is. She laid into me about how selfish I was to spend so much money on something so childish. She stormed out of the room crying and called her father to complain about me once again. I was completely shocked when her father walked into our apartment that evening and demanded we have dinner immediately. I stood there, scolded by Trisha and her father as I prepared them dinner. Comment after comment about how small our living space was and how this just wouldn't do for his daughter. Finally, her dad came out with what he really wanted to say. I can't let my daughter stay in a closet while having as much money as we do. I have a proposal that will save our family a bit of face. I want to offer you a job in my company on the sole condition you quit this ridiculous obsession with these video games that Trisha tells me about, and start acting like a real man who provides for his family. She really had told her father everything. This was what she had been waiting for our entire relationship. Finally, in her eyes, I would be a real adult with a legitimate job that she could mention to her friends without shame. On top of this, she would get rid of the only thing in the house that took away attention from her. My games. It was a win-win. For her, at least. I stammered out a response. Sir, I can't tell you what it means for you to extend me such a generous offer. The only issue is, all of my friends play Call of Duty with me, and it's the only time we get to talk to each other since they live around the world. Without any family. Call of Duty? The only duty you have is to not make my daughter and family the laughingstock of our country club. You have 24 hours to decide. Come on, honey. Let's go get some decent food in a decent environment. They left me there with the meal I had made to impress my father-in-law, and a brand new career dilemma to ponder. That evening, I spoke with my gaming crew about the situation I was facing. They couldn't understand why I didn't just leave Trisha and live the life of a gaming superstar. I was the most skilled gamer in the group. I had offers of endorsement in my inbox as well as countless DMs from the hottest girls around the globe, but this quiet life was what I wanted, and I wanted it with Trisha despite her flaws. She was the only person who treated me with any decency all those years ago, and she deserved my loyalty. And honesty. I told them I would finally tell Trisha about my double life. The only thing I could hope was she hadn't been so completely brainwashed by her dad that she would at least understand why I hadn't told her the complete truth. Suddenly, Trisha burst through the door and saw me with my headset on talking to my team. She completely flipped out. I can't believe you are still on this stupid game. My father and I made it easy for you and you still can't take a hint. You know what? I'm starting to think my mom was right about you being intellectually challenged. Video games are the only thing you have the mental capacity to do. If you can't make the decision, then I'll guess I'll make it for you. Before I knew it, Trisha grabbed my PS5 and tossed it out of the open window. I heard it shatter on the pavement below and I knew it would be a long time before I talked to my friends again. I had spent three months' pay on that console, and waited six more months to find one that was available. The next morning, Trisha stood above me as she forced me to call her father and accept his job offer. She and her dad had won, and I was finally the man she wanted me to be. My streaming life was done. Trisha was right. 
That life was fake, and this was what real life was like for a person like me. Her dad put me at the loading dock, and I quickly realized I had been set up to do the majority of the grunt work around the building. Twelve-hour days were my new normal, and I was even more shocked when I saw my paycheck was way less than I used to make. I finally got the nerve that Friday to knock on Patrick's door and ask what was going on with my pay. You don't have any skills, boy. What do you think, I'm just going to pay you to stand around? This is real work. It takes thought and foresight. You can't do what I do with a controller, son. You do know you're lucky I'm paying you at all. I didn't want my daughter to have a boyfriend with a job title like yours. Now we can tell everyone her fiancé has a job at a Fortune 500 company. They don't need to know you empty the trash. Everyone wins. Trisha always talked about life being about appearances, and now I knew where she had learned it from. When I tried to talk to her about my pay, she was a little less than sympathetic. Why are you worried about a measly few dollars? Do you really want to be back packing boxes? Or do you want a job where you actually have a business card? Daddy said he's going to take care of our rents and all our bills anyway. You don't need to worry about what you're getting paid. That's not exactly fulfilling, Trish. I want to feel like I'm doing something in my life. Like I'm working towards something important in the future. I want to... You just want to waste your money on video games and headsets and stupid computer chairs. You need to understand that part of your life is over. You don't need any hobbies. Your hobby should be making me happy. My dad was right. If you don't have any disposable income, then you can't do anything stupid with it. I'm trying to help you grow up, Ethan. I really wish you would just appreciate that. I went back and forth in my mind about staying with Trisha or embracing my secret life as a popular streamer. I would lose Trish if I did that, but I couldn't take being belittled by her and her dad a second longer. My gaming crew tried to get in contact with me, but Trisha made sure I blocked all of their numbers one by one. I was being cut off. That would have been the end of the story until I had a chance encounter while taking out the trash at work. As I unloaded trash bags into the dumpster in the alley... I saw a face I hadn't seen in a long time enter my building. I followed him inside, keeping my distance before I finally got a good look. He was a little chubbier, but there was no doubt that it was Josh, my neighbor all those years ago. I couldn't let him see me doing this. Ugh, too late. He recognized me before I could hide. Hey, you're that kid who lived next door to me. We caught up back in my place, and I found out he had become a venture capitalist. He had done quite well for himself, but was burned out with the rat race of corporate life. We sat and talked about games, and both forgot about our current problems as we got lost in nostalgia. I even showed him his old Game Boy that I had secretly saved from all those years ago. You know, man, it's so cool catching up with you. I was thinking, I've always wanted to run my own gaming team. What do you say you and your friends come to Japan to train? We can put together a crew and compete around the world. I didn't know what to say. And frankly, I didn't have a chance to before Trisha stormed in from work. She glared at the Game Boy in my hand. Wow! You're so desperate to play your stupid games that you'll even use relics! And who is this? One of your little gaming friends in real life? Psst, that's certainly a first. Hmm. Actually, I'm his new investor. And what are you going to invest in? New trash bags with drawstrings on them so he doesn't come back home covered in garbage juice? You do know your boyfriend is one of the biggest streamers around. Even his fangirl group is verified on Twitter. Pfft, tell me you knew that. I could see in Trish's eyes that she had realized she had misplayed her hand in this relationship. She knew she had to try and get back some control. On cue, the tears started to flow. So, you've been lying to me this whole time? Now you're going to leave me so you can be famous and hook up with all those gamer girls? I can talk to my dad and convince him to give you a proper position in the office if that's what you really want, Ethan. Can't you see this gaming stuff isn't a real job? Maybe not to you and your dad, but it's been everything to me my entire life. Before I met you, video games were all I had. 
I wanted you to be a part of that and not see it as a threat. You hating a big part of me means we can't be together, Trish. I don't care about the girls and sponsors, but at least I know they all support me doing the thing that I love. That's more than I can ever say for you and your dad. Tell him I quit.